Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to my channel, Ask Jimmy Smith. Today, I'm excited to be talking to you specifically about five Amazon selling mistakes that you're probably making in your Amazon business. Now, for many people, this is going to apply uh, to a lot of the audience that I have with arbitrage, but it also can apply for wholesale and private label sellers as well. Um, in, in being someone that has had a business on Amazon since December 2015 uh, and been selling millions of dollars worth of products over that time, as well as also seeing over a thousand success stories come from content that I've taught in my book and course, I have seen a lot of different successes and I've also seen a lot of different mistakes that have come out of myself as well as other people. And so today, this is what I'm going to be talking about are those five Amazon selling mistakes that you're probably making. Now, you may not be uh, doing all five of these. You may just be doing one or two of them, but it's still good to know. Additionally, if you've watched any of my other videos, I've got a bonus sixth one for you. I like to add in a bonus one. Uh, at the end. So if you'd like to uh, stick around to see all six, make sure that you don't forget that there is a sixth one at the end of this. But the very first one that I want to talk about is inconsistency with your shipments or being inconsistent with your shipments. Because uh, what happens a lot of times is sellers will start on Amazon uh, and you know they, they go out, they source new products, they buy them, they'll send them in a week. Maybe they'll do a couple different weeks in a row. But then after a few weeks, they get burnt out or maybe other things get in the way and they're not able to keep up with it. And and then uh, I start seeing questions about why people's sales are not as high as they once were. Many times it comes down to the consistency that you're able to send products into Amazon. It truly is uh, an older saying, I guess, as long as I've been in the Amazon selling communities, that you have to consistently feed the Amazon beast, right? You have to make sure that you're consistent. And so uh, from my perspective, one of the best things that you can do as a seller, whether it's arbitrage or wholesale and even potentially private label, as long as you're um, you know, testing out the right products, I don't want you sending in a bunch of new private label products that aren't going to sell, but arbitrage and wholesale if you know these products are selling, you want to make sure that you're being consistent in the amount of activity that you have on Amazon and how often you're sending shipments. So I highly recommend setting aside at least one day a week to make sure you get your shipments out. The more consistent and often that you can send in shipments, the better. So I would rather you do two shipments of 300 units per week than to do one big 600 unit shipment because Amazon likes to see that consistency. Additionally, if you're doing these uh, regular shipments and they're getting to Amazon, getting checked in, you're constantly going to have new items getting checked in uh, in the Amazon fulfillment centers, which helps your sales to stay consistent and continue to grow because sometimes there's going to be a shipment that gets lost. And if you had one massive shipment and that shipment gets lost for an extra couple of weeks, that's going to really slow down your your sales for that time period. So I highly recommend uh, if you are doing arbitrage, wholesale, and potentially private label, depending on the products that you're selling there, you want to be consistent with your shipments. You want to be consistent with being active with your Amazon uh, Seller Central account. Uh, and you just want to make sure that you've got a regular routine moving forward. So that is the first mistake I see a lot of sellers, particularly new sellers making. As you get into a rhythm, you get to a regular routine that makes it much better for you as a seller, as long as you're sending in the right products that can sell, which brings me to my second point, which is that a lot of sellers aren't fully utilizing Keepa, specifically if you're an arbitrage or wholesale seller as well. There's so many different pieces of information that Keepa has available at your disposal. And most people only ever look at the graphs, the main things that I talk about on my channel, which are the graphs that is, in my opinion, the most important piece of Keepa if you're buying products that are already on Amazon. But there's other things that you can look at. There's a data tab with off and buy box statistics. There's variations tabs. There's a Keepa data product finder and other things within that suite of their tool. Uh, so I highly recommend going in and really looking at all of the different pieces of information that, that Keepa does provide to you because you can use it to find new products. You can use it to revitalize old products. And I actually just did a video recently uh, on my top seven favorite things that Keepa has as a software. And I'll link it up here for you, uh, potentially put it in the description as well. I highly recommend and checking that out, as well as my Keepa playlist on this channel, because I have tons of videos, I think over 10 for sure at this point, and, and definitely growing. But also, if you're interested in how I recommend using Keepa, at least how to analyze Keepa graphs, I do recommend going to my website at askjimmysmith.com forward slash keep a guide because that is where I give away a free 16 page guide that I actually use to train my employees. And I've trained thousands of other students as well with this guide on how to read Keepa charts. But ultimately you want to make sure that you're fully utilizing 
all of the different aspects that Keepa provides to you for such a low fee from a software perspective. I know it used to be free whenever I first started, but ever since they've uh, they've added that charge, there's been extra data points. There's been other things that they've added that I just truly love in the software. So make sure you're fully utilizing that, um, all the different things within Keepa, specifically as well, the price tracking feature. You can track uh, all types of different products uh, to get alerts whenever a product hits a certain sales range or a product hits a certain price, et cetera. There's tons of things you can do with it. So check that out, uh, my video on in my playlist on my channel. Now, the third thing that I recommend uh, in terms of five Amazon selling mistakes that you're probably making, the third one is that you're trying too many new opportunities or getting distracted. This one hits close to home for me. I love to spend money on courses and trainings on all types of different things from regular Amazon selling, whether it was arbitrage when we first started or wholesale or private label or KDP and selling books, or if it's doing uh, proven product partnering, or if it's eBay uh, or Shopify or drop shipping or Facebook ads. I've tried all these different courses. And really what happens is, yes, I learn a ton through those courses and I don't regret a single one that I've taken, but it has distracted me from the main goal that I have in my business. And so I highly recommend that if you are somebody that gets easily distracted with courses like myself, that you figure out the one business that you want to push forward on that you like the most, you're seeing the most success with, you push forward on that until you get to the point where you can outsource it enough and then start these new things moving forward, right? I don't want you to ignore these other opportunities. I just want you to be smart with, with how you are uh, approaching them so that you're not buying a bunch of courses and doing nothing. You want to buy a course or a couple courses, figure out which ones that you like, and then pursue that until you get it to the point where you can offload a lot of the work and start adding in new revenue streams from there. So I highly recommend doing that. Take a look at how much you're spending on courses. Take a look at what it is that, uh, that has worked the best for you and start doubling down on that until you can outsource it enough to start some new things. And actually from a course standpoint, I've also got on my website, askjimmysmith.com forward slash sell dash on dash Amazon. I give my recommendation for my favorite courses, particularly the proven Amazon course. Uh, and there are some other courses that I'm gonna add in the future potentially to that page. But the proven Amazon course has an abundance of courses, including my own actually, uh, that you can go check out there. And I believe currently it's $29 a month. Um, in the future that may raise depending on when you're watching this video. Now, uh, the fourth, thing, the, the fourth mistake that I see for Amazon sellers is that you're not using all the software that you're paying for. So as Amazon sellers, there's tons of software out there for all of us, right? We see them, there's, there's fee calculators, there's things to help us source, there's things to help us manage inventory, there's things for shipments, there's things for anything that you can imagine. There's typically going to be a software created for it of some sort. And I believe that a lot of Amazon sellers like to try new software programs, maybe pay for an annual fee, or maybe they're paying monthly. And those little things add up. And if you're not using your software, you need to go through and do a full audit of the software that you are paying for, what you need to get rid of. Because if you can reduce your expenses by a hundred bucks a month, well, that's about a thousand dollars in sales. If you have a 10% profit margin, that adds up over time, right? A hundred bucks a month, 1200 bucks a year. Maybe it's more for some of you, maybe it's less for some of you, but definitely make sure that you're at least using all the software you're paying for. Whenever I evaluate the software that I'm using, I usually want to make sure that it's helping me make more money uh, than what I'm paying for it. And if I'm making more than $100 a month than it is costing me, then sweet, I will always pay for that software because then it is a profit center for me, or at least it helps me to make more profit. But if I look at it and I say, well, I'm not using this at all, you know, I have two fee calculators, I don't need both. With Rev Seller and ASIN Zen, right? I can pick one of them, in which case that's when you decide to pick one of them. So make sure that you're using all the software that you're paying for. Double check it because it can be easy to just keep adding those things in to your business. Now, the fifth thing that I see as a mistake is a lot of people go at this solo, right? They start an e-commerce business because they want to do work from home and they don't want to deal with other employees and other people. And as they get some success, they're able to move forward 
and kind of isolate themselves. But the best success stories that I've seen are typically through relationships with other people that they have created uh, through networking and through other mastermind groups and even just the larger Amazon seller community. And so I highly recommend make sure that you at least get involved in an online community where you can ask questions for other people. You can even talk about what you're struggling with or what's going well for you, but you need to get in community with people. And so I typically recommend this group that's completely free. Uh, I'm an, a moderator in this and I've been in it since I started with Amazon. It continues to grow. There's over 70,000 members. It's bit.ly forward slash MST group. That's the My Silent Team Facebook group. If you don't want to use that link, ultimately, again, it's free. Uh, and it's one of the best, if not, I actually believe it is the best Amazon selling community out there and e-commerce selling community out there because everybody is extremely helpful. There's a large moderator team to help make sure that we aren't getting spammed in the group all the time. They do a very good job of making sure that there's not a bunch of um, you know, robot accounts that are coming onto Facebook and just spamming people. So they're, they're very active in, in protecting that community. And there's over 70,000 members currently, and again, completely free. But now time for the bonus sixth one, which is not keeping up with your profitability. So many sellers start selling on Amazon because they want to make a few extra hundred dollars or a few extra thousand thousand um, dollars every month or so and they get into it and not really treat it like a business and after a while that can snowball and become a huge problem and so i highly recommend doing your best to keep up with your books uh, keep up with the bookkeeping the profit and loss statements usually people use inventory lab and think that that's okay or good enough it does give you a um, i guess a good overview but it's not going to detail every single thing and so you need to keep up to date with it I highly, highly, highly recommend getting a bookkeeper, an accountant, CPA, whatever it is for your business to help you keep up with those books. I understand as a new seller though, it may be an added cost that you're not able to, um, you know, to afford at this point. So it, there's tons of videos out there to help you with bookkeeping. Also in that proven Amazon course I recommended earlier uh, at askjimmysmith.com forward slash sell dash on dash Amazon, there is a proven accounting training course which helps you set up your own bookkeeping um, for the time being until you have the finances to be able to pay for a bookkeeper. I do recommend e-commerce accounting LLC com. Uh, it's actually full disclosure, my mom, she's been an accountant her entire adult life. And so she has a ton of experience and works with a bunch of sellers. And so obviously I'm partial to her, but you don't have to use her. You could always go to a different bookkeeper as long as they know e-commerce and they know how Amazon works. That is my recommendation. So those are the five, technically six Amazon selling mistakes that you're probably making, especially if you're a newer seller. And even if you have been doing this for a long time, that software one can really eat up some profits over time. Being solo and not having uh, a network of people that you can talk to can really be a big problem as well if you're more of an advanced seller. And also, uh, not keeping up with your profitability can, can be a big pain too. But anyway, if you are interested in the free group, I recommend bit.ly forward slash MST group. The link is also in the description. I hope that this video helped you see the five and technically six selling mistakes that many sellers are making and that it'll help you make some changes in your business. Please leave some comments below on maybe some other mistakes that you've made or that you see other people make that you think should be remedied. Or if there's anything you'd like me to make a video on, leave those comments below. I have read every single comment up until this point uh, that people have left and I've tried to respond to everyone as well. So uh, please leave those. I do read them and take them into consideration. But uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it helped you and blessed you. And I hope that you have a great rest of your day and a blessed rest of your week.